On this week's episode, Nick and I are drinking milkshake IPAs from St. Laurent as we go over our entire adventure at Far and Away. All that and more on this week's episode. Ew, these last three weeks that we do you, what'd you make it to? Yeah, because you know, it's gonna court out the you know, it flies like fucking ten feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I, I, how's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And we are juicing today. Man, this is um, this is straight up juice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like... passion fruit milkshake <laughs> IPA from Saint Laurent. They're not kidding. You don't. Ha- it's not one of those beers where you have to like. Oh, I think I tasted in the middle there. It's like it's up front and heavy. Yeah, is this the yeah. fun suel? Suel? How do you say this? Fun suel. Funasu? I don't know. I was I going with Funakula. That you know. I'm, Funakula. I have no idea what this Funa. is. But this artwork is nice, though, man. There's like yeah. this. Um, it's Asian inspired. It's got a really cool like. Uh, it's a really cool scene on a on like a mountainside. Mm-hmm. It's like some kind of ancient architecture. It looks great. Yeah, it looked uh, Asian inspired, and since I am leaving for Japan here this coming weekend, and we won't be back for a few weeks, I was like, let's get a. It's really not Asian inspired at all, but it looks like it. <laughs> I doubt there's any uh, milkshake IPAs happening in uh, Tokyo at the moment. Maybe. I wonder what this word means. I'm it's not. It's, I'm not familiar with it. No. Um. Yeah. So seven point nine. Tall it's, boys. This you know. kick your ass. Yeah. This is um. Yeah, I think there's like a little vanilla in it. You know to help mm-hmm. clean it up, but there's um. It, yeah, it's, it's a milkshake IPA with passion fruit. Yeah, yeah. I don't it, bold letters on the passion fruit. Yeah, I have, <laughs> passion fruit is one of those fruits that I feel like I should like. It has passion in the name. I think I'm gonna like it, and then every time I I have it, either in like a ice cream or a dessert, I'm like oh yeah, I don't really love passion fruit. This is um. We talk about breakfast beers all the time, and they always lean towards, you know, coffee and maple syrup and, you know, stouties. Like, breakfast and dessert, really, can mm-hmm. go in that direction. But this is a true breakfast beer right here. Oh, yeah. This is uh, yeah, this is that juice. Mm-hmm. And that St. Laurent, I don't know much about them. I feel like they are kind of this cool kid brewery at the moment with these limited release uh, four-pack cans happening. Yeah. Uh, where they're out in... Well, now well, this they're... is brewed at Beguile, right. but... Uh, which is funny that Beguile's brewing this, but then uh, what Great Central is brewing some of Beguile's stuff. And yeah, you're right. Why doesn't Great Central brew this versus. Uh, like, if, if Beguile's <laughs> got capacity, why are they also brewing it great? Because usually if you brew somewhere else, it's like, oh, we, you know, we can't meet demand. Right. Yeah. So at our place, so we, we're brewing at a contract. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't think about that. You're right. Yeah. So, yeah, because they brew at Beguile before brewing at Beguile. They brewed at microphone. Oh, uh, okay. So they came out in the same cool, like, I, I want to say 750 or 765s that microphone comes out. With. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, there are two crews that, you know, love adjuncts and love hazy beers. So uh, one time we were at microphone and I'm like, hey, how do much, how much crossover is there? You know, like, do the St. Laurent guys, you know, come, t- do you guys like share ideas and do you like yeah. help each other with like, you know, with beers? And they were like, zero. Oh, okay. We do our thing there, do our thing. Interesting. Because I was surprised at how I really enjoy all their hazy stuff and uh-huh. their stout. So I was kind of surprised. Like, and they were like, no, Santa Ron comes in and does their own thing okay. on days when, you know, the equipment's available to rock. But so. being attached to Microphone, who's also like this sought after brewery by Chicago uh, beer fans, I think that's yeah. helped Santa Ron. Not, not that the beer is bad, it's a very good beer. It's just uh, my first taste of them, yeah. really, I think. Yeah, I think I try to hunt them down. Like a beer temple a lot, or every time, every week or so, it drops. I'm like, oh, I should probably get a new one. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. Well, we're gonna we're gonna sip on this one. The tartness, it's, it's gonna it's gonna get to us. Yeah, we might have to um, break out the tequila. Yeah, <laughs> cut need like <laughs> a <laughs> some sort of chaser to go in there. Like a little champagne or something. 
There we go. Yeah, right. Um, cool. So we're going to dive into the big event that Nick and I both made it to this past weekend that I'm sure a lot of you saw photos of. I ran into a couple people at this event uh, who listened to the podcast. So oh, nice. Cheers for that. Yeah. But this was far and away put on by the Half Acre crew. You know, people would always, this is my first Half Acre party. Mm -hmm, same. And people would always say, like, you know, Steve from Beer Download, you asked him what's his favorite party. Without hesitation, they'd be like, Half Acre 3. Best party I've ever been to. Like, or like, um, I remember the Sands, which was their craft beer week event at uh, Montrose Harbor at the dock. Oh, okay. And, um, and I remember Jana from Haymarket was telling me, like, it was so crowded and there were so many people showed up that she had to sneak Ray Daniels in. Damn, okay. <laughs> like, you know, like, it was, like, really hopping, really cool party. Like, people love their parties. So I was glad I got to experience this, man. And, oh, man, this shit was, uh, this shit was kind of cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this took place uh, kind of Millennium Park, but it was at the Harris Theater, I want to say. The, right. With, but the rooftop of the Harris Theater. Right. Um, little weird location like when i got off i went past the bean and like i thought it was in the pritzer pavilion area i thought it was gonna be outside in the grass right uh i ended up walking all the way around and then finding like the entrance to get upstairs yeah and it's sneaky far from everything that mm -hmm. place like it, yeah it's yeah but once you get there and you go to the roof yeah it's great they had um it's a big outdoor uh well it's a rooftop <laughs> It's a rooftop, but I would say maybe three fourths of it was covered by this party tent. Mm -hmm. And you know, the DJ is up there, and there is a the the wildest collection of beers you know I've probably ever seen in Chicago right. outside of a Fobab. You know, this was cool. Right. So um, a lot of these beers are beers you can't get in Chicago. They're not released here. There was some sort of I'm sure special weekend permit or limited time frame yeah. for these beers to be here. Uh, but yeah, a lot of these uh, cool breweries, other half. Uh, I don't. I, I can't even think of all the um, names. But yeah, because like, the first one we stopped up to was, um, well, Perennial. They had their Maman release, the barrel aged stout, mm -hmm. and yeah. So per everybody from Perennial to um, De De La Seine, which is a crew from Belgium that made their way yeah. to, to Chicago for this party. But there was big lines. Right away for like perennial, um, other half, um, monkish, monkish, which I didn't try any of those two, by the way. I tried, um, no, we tried other, other we half. tried rice crispy treat, rice proxy treats from other half. Well, we had to get in line, right? But we didn't get in the monkish line, no. And there was another line that we didn't uh, get in side project, side project, that was side project's line. And that I think side project went ran out right away, like, yeah, they were the first to go. It's interesting to see, like, in, a, in an all star stacked lineup like this, like, it's interesting to see, like, who. People gravitate towards like there's lines even at festivals like this. There's lines for one brewery. Uh huh. I'm like, that's a bit much for when me. it's like, what Flora Fanta Fanta? Oh, fl uh, Flora Fanta. They yeah. had no line. Fanta Flora. Fanta Flora. Fanta Flora. <laughs> <laughs> they had no line, and uh, but you walk two, right up. Two days ago or the night before, a beer download or not beer download beer, beer, beer temple, they were packed and people were going nuts for their beers. But you go here, you just walk right up. Yeah, I liked, um, you know, Alvarado Street and um, Green Cheek. Two crews I hadn't heard of, but they placed and um, for IPAs this year. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I want to say um, Contains No Juice from Alvarado Street was, um, it took the bronze in the same category that uh, Corridor took their double juicy yeah. metal in. So here these are GABF award-winning beers. You can walk right up to those because there's no line. We, we talked about how that one that one strip along the wall where it's like Jester King, Fanta Flora, and a Columbus, like you could kind of cruise that whole line, like back mm. to back, you know. And, and I, I really we did, uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> a few of them I didn't try. That. I wanted to try Cane uh, Vanilla Sunday Brunch. People talked about that. Uh, yeah, I didn't didn't get that. Um, but you know, I think the the best part of this party for me was like, you know, you get to stack up some of these cool beers against like local beers that you've had in the same in the same vein. Mm -hmm. Like we're talking about the Saint Laurent stuff, and I was excited to try like you know some of the world work stuff, yeah, and see how it stacks up. And surprisingly, I was like, oh, okay, now I understand. And I'm like, man, the Saint Laurent stuff's kind of going head to head with some of these mm -hmm. guys, which I kind of dug. Or like on the other end, like the Rice Krispy proxy from Angry Chair and other half. I was like, man, this is cool, but this is like way too sweet for me. Okay, and I'm glad I didn't commit to like some kind of crazy trade for like you know my last Kim Trail or some shit, right? Right. I think uh, that was. But Josh from Kankakee Journal, yeah, he was cruising around with us most of the time, and he was kind of saying he 
knows how much some of these bottles go for online yeah. and he said yeah is that worth the thirty dollars or fifty dollars you might pay online versus like oh you got to try a little pour here yeah otherwise that's a you know twenty dollar can kind of thing it's like right. what yeah really so i thought i was like man i'm really kind of you know, I'm kind of appreciative of the fact that we can get down and really try all this stuff from everywhere, all in this, in this, all on a rooftop downtown. <laughs> like, it was actually, it was really cool, man. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the fun little experiments we did after we did a little cruise of uh, Columbus, Flora Fronta. Yeah, I think Bunker and, was over there. And Bunker. We went and got coffee. Yes. I was, um... You know, they were there. The Half Acre, Half... Well, no, Dark Matter. Dark Matter boys were there. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Benthic was Half Acre's latest dark matter coffee beer, uh, unrelated to Big Hugs, right, but right. Uh, along the same lines, right? I think Benthic's like um, toasted coconut and coffee in a barrel, I mm -hmm. think, is a stout, yeah. Uh, so dark matter was pouring iced Benthic coffee, mm -hmm. and then they had espresso as well, Benthic. Right. And these were, they after Benthic was in the barrels, they got the barrels back and put the coffee beans or the coffee in the barrel, right? It sounds like they, um, I think they put them in the barrel pre-roast, right? Yeah. I think so that's how they the do it. The green beans in the barrels. Let, let, it, let yeah. it do its thing. So we got ourselves an iced coffee, an espresso. Yeah. Then we got in the half acre line. We were like some of the last people to get the Benthic. Yeah, I went back and it was only the, um, what was the far and away IPA. Right. Yeah. Which was really good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that was a cool experiment, like getting to try them all. They all tasted different. You couldn't be like, oh, yeah, I taste this coffee. <laughs> well, you wouldn't – you almost needed – you needed the coffee before the barrel, too, the coffee that was used in the Benthic. You then, just needed a regular, like, drip coffee from Half Acre. It's the same coffee. Right. And then – the beer, and then the barrel-aged coffee. Like, you needed the progression of them, right? Yeah. Because we had the beer and then the coffee after the beer. Yeah. But it was cool to be, like, where do you get to do that kind of thing outside of, like, a tap room that has, like, a full kitchen and has all this stuff, yeah, right? <laughs> right. And I love how, like, because, um, you know, they're the host of the party, so they're going to bring it. Mm -hmm. And then, but they didn't announce what they were bringing until like a day or two before. Okay. And, you know, I'm like, oh, Half Acres, you know, I, you know Half Acres, three miles away. I'll, we'll go whenever. Yeah. And then they posted that they're pouring vanilla bent. They come like, fuck, I got to write this down with all the other beers that I have to try. Right, <laughs> so, right. You know, yeah. So um, I didn't, I miss Casey. I wanted to try Casey. Casey was another crazy line. Right. Um, I did get over to the Gesture King. I really dug that. I think a lot of. There were a lot of mixed fermentation, like sour ales and saisons, mm -hmm. and you know we tried. I tried a bunch of them, right? You know, Hacienda and Oxbow, and you know some really cool ones, Fontaflora, American Solera. Yeah. Um, the one I remember was the Jester King one. That was the one that okay. like just. I didn't have that. I didn't have any sip. I'm like Jester nah, King. Yeah, I didn't have Jester King. I didn't have any Jackie O. Jackie O was one of those breweries that people uh, gushed over for a long time, but they just. Uh, uh, they still make great beer, but I haven't heard anyone talk about them in a while. I've heard people, um, we missed the Tired Hands Guava Lavender Milkshake. I heard some people mm -hmm. say there that, you know, they were really one of the, at the forefront of this whole milkshake IPA thing. Okay. You know, inventors of the style is what they said. I don't, I mean, this is a drunk conversation at Beer Fest, but, you know. <laughs> a drunk, uh, the milkshake, I uh, guess. Yeah, like they were like the first ones out. But I didn't know. I wanted to try it anyway. Mm -hmm. I know at, um, we go to Dark Side, Chris, uh, Chris's event at Emporium every year, and that's another stacked dark lineup, and the first beer that kicks every year is the uh, tired hands. No, four hands. Oh, four, four hands. hands. Four hands. Tire, tired hands. Tired hands. Tired hands is a different brewery, right? Scratch that is a brewery. That, yeah, that is a brewery. <laughs> that's a brewery. Scratch what I just said. Yeah. Four hands. Yeah, they make they make a beer called is it Sun Crusher? It's like a orange Radler type of beer. I don't want to say it's Sun Crusher. That's really good. Like a four percent summer beer. Yeah. It was um. It was cool. You know, the Referend uh, Beer Blendery, which I hadn't heard of, hmm. really small outfit out of somewhere in New Jersey. And, you know, towards the end, we were, you know, I noticed that they got like these ceramic vessels that they're pouring out of. They got the old school Belgian. Oh, know. is that who that was? Yeah. I just see these people. I'm like, yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> they got the wooden basket, you know, for their, for their, uh, for their framboise, which was really good. Um, tender Buttons, I think it was called. Mm. Oh, so, you know, I'm talking to them. I'm like, yo, I don't know all the breweries here. I mean, do you guys know all the breweries here? They were like, you know what, man? I do not. 
you know. And I think well, you introduced me to uh, who's the other uh, Matt uh, Gallagher. Matt Gallagher from, from Half, Half Acre. Acre. We were asking him like, oh, are these just breweries you guys like, or mm -hmm. are you friends with? Um, what is this? He's like, no, most of these people are friends with. We've either met or we uh, communicate with in the in the scene. So yeah, that's cool. I thought that was um, that was interesting too. Like. I mean, these guys are really diving. These guys are real nerdy about this because they know people in breweries that I, that we thought we knew about beer. Yeah. And then they're rolling in with like I think you know fifteen or so breweries, and I'm like, yo, I've never heard of these beers a day in my life. Which is awesome to hear that the, you know, Gabriel and Matt and some of the other Half Acre people are like still in love with beer that much that they like seek these out and want to see what everyone else is doing. Where it's easy to get like. Yeah, we're super big. Drink our stuff. Yeah. That's all we got. We don't really drink anyone else's. We don't care. Yeah. We make the best. <laughs> You're right, man. It's a, it was a deeper dive into modern craft beer than than just about any other fest. And, you know, you see a lot of rhetoric around, like, oh, the Invitational is where it's at, and the festival's kind of like, oh, it's boring, it's sterile. And, I mean, I understand what people are trying to say with that. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember, like, because um, we go to a lot of uh, Lou Dog events through, yeah. through Seago. And in the beginning, you know, I think he was like, you know, hey, let's just get the, the popular regional local breweries of the day and throw your, your cookie cutter beer fest. But now his festivals are kind of like, you know, there's a VIP area and there's some really cool beers going on in there. I mean, like in the last year or two, he's really like, he's yeah. got some cool events under the festival brand. Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't, it's not like, it's not dismissive of festivals to say that this party is nothing like we've seen before. Mm-hmm. But it, it, but it kind of was, you know. Yeah, I believe we said last week, and I reiterated this when we were there, a lot of the beer festivals, you sort of, you drink what you know. Like, oh, I haven't been to Spiteful in a while. I haven't been to, or I haven't had gone to Band of Bohemia, but I want to try their beer at the festival versus like, oh, it gets pricey to go for dinner kind of thing. You do kind of that kind of stuff. But here, you are forced to try it. Everything new. Maybe yeah. the only ones you may have had in Chicago are like Half Acre, Wise Acre, Sun uh, yeah. King. Cheers to Wise Acre, man. Yeah. yeah. Like so then you're at a festival, it's like you almost feel like a new beer drinker again. Like, whoa, let's do this. What's everyone in line for? I don't know what this is. I think I've heard about it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was great from a discovery standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like um, and I was impressed with how they actually like knew all these folks, and then actually you know talked to everybody into coming downtown. So, yeah. um, kudos to those guys, man. You know, I heard somebody say online, "Man, I'm gonna drink Daisy Cutter it for the rest of my life since, since that party." You know, just <laughs> wow. to support Half Acre. You know? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. I talked to the Lawrence Brewing people for a little bit, yeah. like just because I was like, "Who are you? Like, what is the scene like in Kansas?" <laughs> And it was Lawrence, Kansas. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it was Lawrence, Kansas. They said, yeah. What's funny, they mentioned like, yeah, our beers are kind of more expensive. We're in a college town, but we're the place that kids take their parents when they come and visit. Uh -huh. Like, it's like a treat, probably because the parents are buying yeah. and the beer is better versus like, they know they're like competing against Coors Light 30-pack drinkers. <laughs> mm. uh, but that was cool to hear. And they mentioned there's some other breweries out there. Yeah. It was fun, like once you, and the fact that the brewers or representatives were actually pouring the beers, versus yeah. you go to festivals, it's volunteers, like oh tell me about this beer, uh, it's got vanilla in it and it's barrel aged, <laughs> <laughs> like thanks, but it's like oh tell me about your brewery, what's the setup like? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, far far and away was a hit, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. Um, Ticket. I'm looking at the list, and I'm like, I'm trying to think of what I didn't talk about that I had. Yeah, tickets were $80 a piece, so a little steep for some people, but I would say it was definitely worth it. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100% mm -hmm. worth it. And then you instantly put up an article on uh, Chicago Beer Geeks. Because I was psyched, man. I looked around. I'm, at, I'm going to my sister's party on Sunday. I'm like, man, Brad's got pictures up already. I'm like, fuck, I better start working on this story because yeah. I, yeah, I knew it would wait. Yeah, so. I put the pictures up on our Facebook page. Then you grabbed them and also put them up <laughs> on the Beer Geeks uh, <laughs> post as well. So it's awesome that they get they get more use because, you know, pictures can get buried very fast so yeah. when they can be used again. That's cool. I was, um, yeah, man, that was so good. Like, because, you know, your regular, your regular Saturday is usually like, all right, cool. You know, you might go to a cool bottle share or you might end up at a brewery or two. 
you know. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, you got to do this on a Saturday. And, mm-hmm. it was... and then we hit the early session, which means we're done. Like I got, it was ended at, was it ended at four o'clock? Because yeah, the second good. session was at five. five. Josh and I hung around for a while, yeah. for like a half hour <laughs> <laughs> talk, and they kicked us out finally. We weren't even drinking. We were just standing up there. <laughs> Uh, but then you rolled all the way to the north suburbs. Yeah, man. I headed up to North Shore to check out Ravinia. Ravinia had their um, their grand opening this weekend. Ravinia Brewing Company up in Highland Park. Okay. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So the train I take to leave downtown to go home is the same train that runs to uh, Ravinia. Oh, cool. So you so, didn't even have to get off. No, I just, you know, just went up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what is this? Uh, where? Oh, yeah, we said Highland Park. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this was their first place. It was packed because it's their grand opening, and there's like uh, there's like maybe a 10, 15 minute wait. Um, so we get in there, and apparently this is Billy, Billy Corgan's little spot. It's like in a it's like a tea, it was a tea cellar mm-hmm. at one point. It's like right off the main drag. It's like literally like a, like steps from the train. Oh, cool! So easy to get to. Um, yeah, I had a, I had a good time. It was a taco bar and a and a brewery lunch. Um, they had cans available to go, and then everything was five bucks on tap. Instead of the regular seven bucks on tap. Okay. Yeah. So. Man, their beer is gonna be seven dollars usually. Yeah, seven dollars pop. Whew. Yeah. Um, I didn't see any brewing equipment. I saw the. I met the guys. So cheers okay. to the Ravinia guys. Awesome. Um, I meant to ask them like, hey, is there brewing equipment here? But it sounds like um, they're brewing at, um, fuck, they're brewing at Finch. Finch. Okay. They're brewing at Finch. Um, I think we had the pills, the IPA. There was like a, uh, there was a fruited beer with blackberry in it. We okay. had that. And, and we had a bunch of tacos. And then on the podcast here, we've had. I think the pills is yeah. a green can. Yeah, I think the pills We've is green. Had the orange can. Um, I think the orange can is the pills, and the green can is the Steep Ravine IPA. Yeah. Okay. So I know. I think we've had those two. Yeah. I want to say on the podcast over the many a years. <laughs> yeah, and I know we like the pills, mm-hmm. and it's interesting that scene up there because, like, you know, Ravinia now has a stop. You know, you get off in uh, Lake Bluff, just uh, a few stops up. There's also. A brewery in Lake Bluff now. Okay. You know, only Child's up in Gurney. That's off that line too. If you you know you're going up that way. Oh, so you could just ride that train. You can you could if you weren't going to work, you could make a day of you know up there. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was a good time, man. So cheers to those guys. Oh, and it's kid friendly. So when you go to the back, you know the outdoor patio has like a bunch of astro turf. Okay. And I'm like, hey, I remember I had an apartment with I uh, laid down some astro turf on the patio. Oh, I was like, in your apartment? <laughs> oh, that, no, that would no, be weird. On the, on, on, uh, coming up the concrete. I'm a big <laughs> golfer. <so. laughs> and um, yeah, you know, and then live band, and then there's also a bar back there too. Okay. Yeah. So, um, relatively small place. It had the really cool, like, um, you know, Chicago style. Uh, tile architecture on the ceiling. Okay. Uh, you know, like kind of decorative tiles. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, but then they had some of their tiles were neon with the logos of some of their beers on the tiles. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and behind the bar, there's the taco taco bar, and the actual the taco bar is behind the bar with the beer. Okay. So they're and making the most out of that space. Nice. Is the taco bar an actual, like, are they making food there, or is it a food truck? No, it's like a grill. Oh, okay. It's like a grill. They're rolling straight up like quesadillas. Tacos. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Sounds good. So it was. It was cool. It was a good way to end the day. Uh huh. Yeah. So if you're up in Highland Park, it's definitely probably a good stop. And if you could grab some beer to hop on the train. Yeah, I know. Like the company I work for, they're based in the North Shore. Mm-hmm. So I can remember being on that train a lot. And that's actually a, a lot of ways how I got into beer. I'd get on that train at Union Pacific North at Lake Forest. Lake Forest has two liquor stores. At the, yeah, cross street from the train, you know, you can get on the train and make friends. Okay. And that, that, that was my beer journey, so it was kind of cool seeing, like, you know, going beyond liquor stores now. Now there's, like, straight-up breweries in Lake, in, in Lake County off that train line. Yeah. Which is cool. That's nice. I've never – I don't think I've ever taken that train. I've gone to Highland Park. I've biked through that path on when I biked to uh, Tighthead one time. Oh, wow. <laughs> from Wicker Park? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, Wonderline, Illinois. <laughs> but I will, I'm never biking that again. That was far. <laughs> but so I've gone past that train. I had a friend who couldn't make the ride, and he ended up riding that train. But yeah, I've never rode that train. Yeah, nice. That was a good time. Cool. Uh, any other stops? Or that was the only thing I only did far and away. So you, you double, double dipped that day. I'm yeah. surprised you were walking. 
I was spent after that, man. Um, cheers to the Chicagoland Food and Beverage Network. I, I did go over there. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a, um, they had an event. They usually do a, a breakfast series, um, but now they did like a spotlight on uh, craft distilleries. Mm. So they had three distillers come out and talk about their 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 spirits. And then they had, um, they had cocktails crafted by uh, James Beard, award-winning uh, cocktail cocktail. Ologist. That's not what you call a cocktail no, person. Yeah. Cocktail. Mix, mixologist. Mixologist, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, fucking like cocktailologist. <laughs> <laughs> so this place, first of all, this was at the Mitz, which is Mitz. it's a mm. um it's a rehabbed like graystone on the residential block. Like, okay. <laughs> like uh, off like division. It's the strangest thing. I'm like walking down the block, I pass it twice and I'm like, Oh shit, here's the spot right here. It's like in between it's on a block. It's on a residential block. It's yeah, strange. okay. Uh, mm-hmm. it was a cool it's cool event space though. Ryan Hall Apolog, which is down in uh, Thornton, Illinois, which is like twenty miles south of the city. And Leatherby. Oh, yeah. cool. So they were there, they told their story. Awesome. So that's very nice. Cheers to those guys, man. Um, oh. I had a great time. Cocktails are good too. Awesome. Um so that's our past weekend some of the stuff we hit up uh, i'm sure there's plenty of things we missed as well mm, we missed the spiteful Oktoberfest. They Oktoberfest, had... yeah that's tough right mm-hmm. i saw it i still have their card we need to get up there and do a little interview talk to them i'm down with that i like the spiteful guys yeah definitely um was there a favorite thing you drank at far and away best thing you drank this week or yeah not it I tell you, man, um, two beers jumped out at me. Uh, one of them was the, um, what, the Fremont Rusty, was it the Rusty Nail? That's we'll pull it up right now. It was possibly, Fremont right? in, uh, up in uh, Seattle, so up in Washington State. Mm-hmm. Um, they had something called the Rusty Nail. It was a barrel aged imperial style. That, that, was, um, that was my jam. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if I, did I try that one? Hmm. Not sure. Um, we waited in line for something, and I ended up getting a different one, the Broccoli. Oh, This the was broccoli. from Other Half Brewing, the Double Dry Hopped Broccoli. Okay. That was probably my standout of the, I don't know, just of that event, and maybe yeah. the best thing I drank. It was just a really good double IPA, 8%. Uh, it was just nice. You ended up getting whatever, like... Stout was in that everyone was in line for. Yeah, I got. And I was the, like, I'll um, take this other one that no one's yeah, getting. Yeah, the rice proxy, rice proxy treats. It was a collab between Angry Chair and other half. And people would. I had never had any Angry Chair for a few years before, but people from a sweetness standpoint would always compare them to. You remember um, Southern Tier? Mm-hmm. How they had those dessert beers like Chocolat. Yeah. And, you know, like um. Yeah. Pumpkin. And... Yeah, like all those beers, and they were like, it's it's sweet. Like those beers are sweet. Okay. And yeah, and they were right. Um, vanilla benthic, which is uh, uh, coconut, vanilla, and coffee, imperial style, barrel imperial style, it was as good as anything I had that day. Yeah. Rusty nail, same thing. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. What about this coming weekend or any events coming up people should be getting tickets for, checking out? I know the big one coming up in November, uh, Phobab. Man, it's Phobab time already. Phobab time already. We just... Uh, yeah, our final outdoor event was Far and Away now. I think Far and Away is going to be, is that going to be our outdoor end. beer fest end of summer? Yeah. Maybe. That's maybe what the hope is there. It's a good time because if, if we make it to Prop Day, that's usually like the second week of November. Mm-hmm. Always a little stiff right. temp-wise. So you got mid-October, late October. That's a good time. So you got Prop Day. You can still possibly get tickets for. There's the lottery system happening there. Then you got Fobab tickets you can get for. There's three sessions, one on Friday, two on Saturday. We'll be at the Saturday morning because that's when the awards that's happen. That's when the awards are. Uh, Friday's probably going to be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've been to the Friday session maybe like once because Friday wasn't always a thing. It was usually like just two sessions on Saturday. Right. Um, I've never done Friday. It seems like a good, like, all right, let's just do this. Like, I like almost like get it over with. <laughs> right. I like to chill on Fridays. I don't really like go too hard on Fridays. Okay. Saturday morning is always fun. Saturday night. You that's dangerous. <laughs> uh, Saturday night's where it's at though, man. If you're if you're ranking the three, 
I mean, if you want to party, because we do the show, so I really like being there for the awards. You know, yeah. I like the experience of the awards, and then like you know, and remembering what you had, and remembering what you had, and then like just seeing like how some of these brewers continue to do their thing over like course of time, like four or five year period. You know, you see some guys like the Revolution guys just go up there like oh, every year, and that's kind of cool to see. Yeah, but Saturday night, man. Saturday night's Saturday night's okay. Mm, all right, so get get your tickets for that. Um, they're still up. I don't think they've sold out yet. Um, but then, oh, yeah. What else we got? What's coming up this weekend? Oh, speaking of Revolution, man, um, the Deepwood series is upon us, Brad. Uh, they're doing two of them this year. I want to say it's like eight releases this year. Yeah. For their their barrel aid stuff, the VSOJ and the Code Switch are dropping on the nineteenth, which is Friday. So they're just releasing these, like. Every weekend, or what's the? They're just slow rolling everybody on this. Slow rolling everybody out, and you know it's kind of smart because they're beating like all the other big barrel releases to the punch, right? Right, because Goose kind of said we do Black Friday. Uh, that's our day. That's what we do. And they all got to come out that day, unless there's like little variants or versions of it. Yeah. Um, but so, so the, it looks like the um, you can go to the uh, Kedzi. Kizzy Tap Room. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get four packs of this beer. The Coast, which is thirty um, plus tax. The VSOJ is thirty five plus tax for the four pack. It's a four pack cans. Four pack cans. Twelve ounce cans. Four pack, twelve ounce cans. Okay. What time on Friday can you get uh, mine? Yeah, there's limit two per person. Uh, this is going from four to eleven. Four to eleven. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what do we know about these? Oh, Code Switch is a collab with Sun King. Right, and they got uh, these are Tennessee whiskey barrels. It looks like uh, dark candy syrup and a Belgian yeast culture with uh, unfermented blackberries. Damn. Yeah, so that's fourteen uh, percent. And then VSOJ, you know, is um, very special old straight jacket. Straight jackets, their English barley wine. Mm-hmm. So this is a blend of two and three year barley wines. Um, that sounds pretty good. Can you only thirty five dollars a four pack? Yeah. Can you only get these at Kedzie? Are they gonna be? Limited release. My, my guess is that you can get these all across town. Okay. Um, but that release day. But this is the release day at the at the tap room. Okay. And then they'll also do cash only. They're also doing um, pints of non barrel aged beers for six bucks. But you can get five ounces of these barrel aged variants for six bucks. So they're going to have other variants of these on tap. You know this cherry, the VS double barrel VSO cherry sounds pretty good. There's like a lineup of like five of the variants that you can get. Right, nice. So, so they're tweaking the code switch, and they're tweaking both of these releases for the party. That's cool. And, and having them on draft. Nice. That sounds like you said you chill on Friday, but that sounds like if 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 someone's in town and they want to do something, I'm gonna be like, hey, hit let's Nick just, up. Let's just blow off everything and go <laughs> hang out here. Nice. That sounds good. Boom. But the man. Whew. That's the big party this weekend, man. You spend uh, a lot of money in. What late October, November on beer? Like it's just like the prices of those beers are just like if you're that person, you got these now, you got Goose Island, and then you also have uh, there's someone else that releases a one-off beer or Big Hugs. Yeah, is that November too? Or it is might that, be might be December. It might be or, early December. Yeah. yeah, you're just like, and there's like three or four versions of Big Hugs that come out. Man, yeah, strapped. <laughs> you have to pick up a paper route, man. Nice. Cool. Anything else people should grab tickets for or keep an eye out for? Um, That's all I got, man. That's all I got this upcoming weekend. All right. Sounds good. Uh, before we get out of here, what about a little beer news? What's what's happening? Oh, man. Um, Speaking of uh, maybe either we're cheap or the beer's expensive. I haven't figured out which is which yet. But um, the Barrel Age does uh, talk about more. Barrel Age uh, Karma. Mm-hmm. The beer that took uh, best in show at Fogat last year. Yeah. Um, it, it was a surprise ticket release this week. So tickets went on sale like um, you know, like on like on a Wednesday, like and tickets were gone in an hour. So, How do you find out about this? Well, they posted it to all their outlets. Um, but they just kinda said, Hey, here's the link. Tickets are available now. Okay. Right. Instead of like having a build up and a release date, they said the day of, Oh, tickets are on sale right now. Okay. You know, it's kind of cool. Kind of like a, a surprise album drop or something. Sure, right? yeah, no. cool. Um, that was a $28 bottle. So that's Barely uh, Karma, which is, um, I want to say that's their henna. 
Mm-hmm. Henna in a barrel with like coffee, and vanilla. Was it a bottle? Or I feel like I saw can pictures. Yeah, that was the non barrel aged version. Uh, the can. Yeah, okay. you're right. Non barrel aged version was the can. Um, but I kind of like this ticket drop thing. You know, just kind of surprise. You, you got to be ready for it. No you, hype. Yeah. No, no, everyone waiting for the moment to hit yeah. the buy button and crash the sites. No, I live in Villa Park, so I'll be there drinking it all. Like, none of that. Yeah. It's like, hey, here's a Eventbrite release ticket and boom. Yeah. And it, it game or it it hacks that social media thing where everyone talks about it being broken or not working it's like guess what you got to still follow us you can't you can't quit facebook you can't quit twitter (laughs) you want these beers i happen to be taking a 10 minute break i happen to be scrolling my phone you know i happen to see it Mm -hmm. but yeah we were thinking like man did you know oh well i work downtown so this is a 28 dollar beer so I'm going to take a Metro to Villa Park. Yeah. That's going to be probably like five bucks each way. Yeah. And then if I walk to to this place, you know, this is still like 40 <laughs> Not that I'm complaining about price, but, you know, I'm making note that, you know, that's probably a $40 play for this one bottle. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm doing it. So there's that. Oh, did you get a ticket? I got a ticket. Oh, damn. So I'll okay. go out there and check it out, you know. What day do you get to buy it? Um, You can, no matter what your ticket says, because there were um tickets for all Friday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, but you have until Sunday night, regardless of your time slot, you have until Sunday night to reclaim your bottle. So you'll, this this weekend or what? Yeah, this weekend. What I liked about it was that, um, they kind of said, Hey, if you don't read the rules, cause you know, uh, Eventbrite lets you buy tickets for every single day. If you want, if you don't read the rules, we'll give your money away to charity cause you, they don't count duplicates. So if you bought for all three days, those other two days potentially went to charity. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then they kind of said, all right, you guys didn't follow the rules, so we'll refund you this one time. But next time we do this, just so you know, none of that doubles duplicate stuff You're, it's going to charity next time you try to buy more than one. Right. So get another email address. <laughs> you know, you got to pull that Uber, you know, get, Uber shit. Get, and get you know, the free rides. Yeah, and get, change. get the family involved. Get the, get, the, get the old lady involved. You know, no duplicate stuff. <laughs> nice. Uh, but, man, that's, that's super smart of them because you're going to have to – People are now, or beer people are now going to put turn on alerts for more because mm-hmm. they want to know. And now everything, you're going to see everything, even the bullshit, we got new Pilsner on. Or, you know, tapping. Alert. Yeah. It's cool. And, you know, they are working that henna, man. I'll mm-hmm. tell you, they are working it. Well, yeah, that's, it's, that's what you got to do, right? Goose did it with Bourbon County. That's true. Yeah, um, the abduction series. Mm-hmm. You know, you see uh, 18th Street with their um, Hunter, which is their Vanilla Stout series. Yeah. So once you like hit yeah. that little stride, you you go, you run with yeah, it. Look at Sculpin. How many yeah. variants of Sculpin have there been? Yeah, that you know? that backfired on them. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, you mean don't you follow didn't, Sculpin's oh, lead? You, mean you didn't pick up uh, Spruce Tips Sculpin, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, we forgot about the uh, Lincoln Avenue stroll going on i want to say that's is that this weekend the 21st uh yes 19th is uh friday yeah so this is a sunday uh lincoln avenue beer stroll three to six it's a 35 dollar ticket um you get to cruise lincoln park and there's or lincoln avenue and there's two routes uh belmont to diversity or uh belmont to addison yeah and it looks like you get complimentary bites and 20 businesses are participating so you know your bitter pops promiscuous all these guys are participating. So you basically just like a, um, well, it's like a, what do you, it's a stroll. Yeah. You walk down the block, you got this badge, and you go party at every stop for a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. But that leads into this other story that I'm sure you have written down. There's going to be one less on this stroll. Really? Burnt City shutting down. Oh, They're yeah. moving. That's right. No more Burnt City. I think the- Well, um, nope. There's still be Burnt City. Sorry. I'm but not there. on Lincoln Avenue. We don't want- any angry emails yeah. from people? Because the email, not the email, but the the story kind of implies that they're done. But just the headline. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's, it's worded in a way where you're like, oh, really? They're done? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're right. So. So they are shutting down the Lay's Potato Chip Factory. Yeah. They're shutting again. down the, again because it was closed when they moved in. <laughs> they're shutting down the, uh, per, or tap room on Lincoln. I don't even know who ever went to the potato chip factory or... Yeah, I don't know if there was, like, 
Were they, was, was there not? Was there was there a tap room? Like, or was it just production? Just, just production. Were enough people buying their beers? It doesn't sound like it. I think like well, you know, the climate's changing. You know, mm-hmm. I think they were brewing with around the bend, right? Around the bend was brewing with at Burn City, and um, at the potato chip factory. Yes. Wait. So well, around the bend had. There's are they're already working on something else. I think they're I think they're going to be brewing at the new Burn City too. Oh, okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, because he was on the show and he kind of alluded to, "Hey, don't say anything yet," but <laughs> we're looking we're looking to come closer to you know downtown. downtown yeah. Yeah. All right, because I was gonna say if Burn City bounces without around the bend, around the bend gets screwed again. It's bad luck because they were at um. L- oh, they read El Syndicate. You're wearing I'm the shirt. Like El Syndicate shirt today. Uh, <laughs> some man, some bad. Yeah. Bad but, luck for around the bend, but, but I believe they're brewing with them. Yeah. yeah. It de- it hasn't mattered where around the bend is brewing. They've never been location specific. So mm-hmm. around the bend is separate. Yeah. In Burn City, they are downsizing. Really, yeah. that's all that comes down to. Right, because it's like um, they had two locations. Now there's going to be one location. Uh, no food, right? No Just food. Their food was good. I saw. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, I like their food. I uh, like their space. I like the um. I like the bowling alley. Yeah, you know they had the vintage um like French and Belgian you know vintage uh, posters and the gorgeous frames. Mm-hmm. They had the old school bowling alley where you had to write down your score with the pencil and the paper, and it was right next to a bar, and it was right next to a brew house. Yeah. So that was a cool little that was a cool little setup, and then their bar was like. Two stops, two doors down from Delilah's. Right. I think getting rid of the tap room or the brew pub, mistake. Yeah. Moving to the brewing district, smart. So I don't know how this plays out for Burnt City. This is it's a weird it's a weird story. Their beers are their beers are pretty good. We've I like had beer. we've had them on the show. Yeah. We've drank plenty of their beers, even when they were Atlas. We yeah. drank them, I still Think Atlas when I think Lincoln Park location, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Burnt City. Eh. Yeah, so they're going to be part of um, you know, working that synergy. We were talking about taking the train. If you got to take the train to the North Shore, mm-hmm. you know, you go. You can if you're in West Loop, you know, you walk, and there's six breweries within walking distance of you. If you're at uh, Little Goat, there's like six to eight breweries in walking distance. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Cause that's like you know, because if you're walking dis, if you're at Little Goat, you're walking distance from Metra. Like you're walking distance from Union Pacific. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, from uh, Union Station. Yeah, so, nice. So, that's cool. They're inserting themselves into a space that's already rolling. Mm-hmm. We have no idea when they're gonna open this spot. Maybe we can get a little sneak peek uh, since we're we're friendly with them. Bernstein was on a show once. Yeah, yeah. We had a uh, Ben. Yeah, on the show. Yeah. Cool. Um, what else we got? All right. So, uh, Chicago Magazine uh, mm-hmm. came out with their um, article of the indisputable ranking of Chicago's top 10 craft breweries. Uh, craft brews. In, craft, craft brews? Craft brews. Uh, indisputable. Indisputable. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Can't, well, I can't say anything. It's indisputable. It's indisputable. <laughs> let's, uh, let's run it down. We'll start at 10. Number one is Bourbon County Stout. Right? That, that makes sense, right? Wait, there's craft breweries. Yeah. So already, dispute it. <laughs> this is not a craft brewery. Number seven is Zombie Dust. Oh, but let's start from the top. I said that's not even. A, it's not. A, it's not Chicago. Right? <laughs> Damn it! This list. <laughs> all right. So um, you start. You set me up. <laughs> all right. Number ten is Eek, off color. Uh, number okay. nine is the Shade Black Truffle from uh, Moody Tongue. Uh, mm. Number eight is Malevolence, Chocolate Caliente Stout, um, Spiteful. Number seven, Zombie Dust. Number six, the top heavy hef from Peace. Number five, Ninja versus Unicorn. I actually like the top, I like the top five a lot. Okay. Top five is Ninja versus Unicorn. Uh, Flywheel, Metropolitan. Number four. Number three, Antihero. Number two, Daisy Cutter. Number one, BCS. There's your list. Shout out to Carl Clockers. I like Charles Carl. We um, you know, there was a homebrew contest. Did he do the list. He did the list. Yeah, he he, he freelances for uh. He uh, knows Goose yeah. isn't a craft brewery. A, yeah. yeah. He has written we, <laughs> every single word that could ever be written about <laughs> Goose Island, and he knows they're not a craft brewery. Yeah, we um, there was a homebrew contest at Miller Coors headquarters, 
And um, they had a couple judges. I was one. Carl Clockers was one. I like Carl Clockers. Mm -hmm. He's cool. Um, oh, so this is the list. So where do we start here? Yeah. Now, the black, the shade black truffle from uh, from Moody Tongue. I want to say there was a variant. It was a. It started when when Jerry Rubin was at uh, Clybourne because he had a beer called like Black Madonna. Okay. And it was the same. It was a, it was like a lager or a pills with <laughs> some truffles in it, right? Okay. Um, that's number nine. Zombie Dust is brewed in Monster, Indiana. Yeah. Um, I'll start there. And I think if you're gonna do, if you Zombie Dust was their first new six pack in some years, right? You know, like I right, so you had Robert the Bruce and Pride and Joy over and here. And Jinx. And Jinx Proof and all that shit. And then, you know, fast four or five years, and then Zombie Dust was the first beer in and five pe in People years. went nuts. People that would went be, nuts. If I had to say number one overrated Chicago beer, it would be Zombie Dust. I went to, I went to a spot two days ago. Zombie Dust was like 20 bucks for a six pack. Yeah, no way. And I think it was a spot by, in Rogers Park by me. Zombie Dust um, is a good beer. And when it started, it was a Citra Hop single pale ale. And mm -hmm. it was good. I don't think it's still citrus. I think those hops have been changed out. You know, just yeah. just off taste, not from what someone said. Just like tasting it, I'm like, this ain't the same. I got a full case. I got a case of this for my birthday. Which I love zombie dust. If someone has zombie dust, I will I, drink it. Like I'm not. Stuff. I will absolutely never buy zombie dust. If it's there, and someone has it, if I'm at a beer festival, I will also get it. It's good. Yeah. But I will. I'm not gonna spend my money on zombie dust today yeah. in this current beer world. Yeah. I think um, I think if you're gonna do non Chicago beers, I mean, you probably gotta look at the boys out in, the, in Aurora. You gotta go Two Brothers. You gotta go, you know, Cain and Abel, or you know, I think yeah, you gotta go. Not as good as Zombie Dust. It's, I, it's no, good. It's different. I know. Or what's the one that um they always clean up with? They always clean up with one of those beers. Uh, Prairie Pat? No. Uh, do, 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 do. Abel? No. I don't think they do Abel anymore. Do they? Um, I think it's seasonal. Mm. Uh, maybe that's the problem. We can't name. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is we can't name the two brothers beer that should be in the list. But we can name Zombie Dust, and that's why Zombie Dust is on the list. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I remember when they they t they tweeted out uh, two brothers. They're like, yeah, you know, this is like in competition. This is like the eighth time this beer's crushed it, and I'm like, you know what? Good for them. You know what two brothers is? It's always good. It's the shows that are on reruns, like back in the day, yeah. before your primetime shows would happen. Like, these are all good shows. That's why they're in syndication <laughs> and why they're on TV. That's Two Brothers beers, yeah. right? Like, ah, I love this. When it's on TV, when The Simpsons are on, I'm going to watch it. When this show's on, yeah, let's do it. Oh, if there's a Cannon and Abel, I'm down. <laughs> I love Cannon and Abel. <laughs> so selfishly, I would have put, <coughs> put Cannon and Abel in place of Zombie Dust. I think the top five is solid, though, man. NBU, yeah. Flywheel, um, and, oh, yeah, Antihero, Daisy Cutter, okay. and BCS is solid. Hey, I like Spiteful at the number eight spot. That's cool, because that's, that's nice, a really yeah. good beer. That is good, yeah. I'm surprised that Black Shade Black Truffle. Um, Eek is good. Mm -hmm. I like Eek. I'm surprised that uh, Shade Black Truffle is on the Undisputable list. Yeah. But and uh, and uh, Peace on there for their half. I would have thought maybe their – Camel Toe? No, people don't. They don't brew it enough, uh -oh. <laughs> and uh, it's not. <laughs> I just felt like saying Capital. I do love that beer. I would think not cross a gold, uh, golden arm. Oh, I yeah. would think that's a better brew beer at the pub if you're going there. Like top heavy is good, but it's also cumbersome glassware. Is that the for, one, the really big, yeah. the sixteen ounce? The... So, not to say that this was based on beer, uh, but I would rather have a golden arm if I'm there. But. Yeah. Um, hmm. Interesting list. Um, you can go read, you know, his his details on on each one. Um, That's an interesting. It was cool, list. and you know, it was noteworthy. I do I do like the top five, for sure. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, Founders uh, CBS is coming out um, nationwide release on November second. Um, that's uh, the Canadian breakfast style. Now mm -hmm. it's just CBS. Um, oh, but it won't have the uh, it won't have the Mountie on the horse on the label. Why? It'll just have the horse. Why no Mountie? Because they got a cease and desist from the Royal Canadian Mountie Police. Okay. Say, quit putting a goddamn Canadian police officer on your beer that's not Canadian. Man. Yeah, so this is twice for them because you remember- um, The baby. The baby on Breakfast Out. It used to yeah. be a baby drinking a bowl, and now it's just a bowl because people were saying, oh, well, you're, you know, like- Oh, you're encouraging like babies to drink. I don't know. Oh, why is there a baby on your beer? Yeah, they sh they should do a small 
uh, Canadian breakfast stout of a baby <laughs> eating cereal, looking at a picture of a Mountie, wanting, like, dreaming. It should be, like, the and second. And it's the small. Yeah. It's, like, the second, second running. running. Yeah. <laughs> that should be their beer as just, like, they could just do, like, uh, single cans at the brewery, like, yeah. screw you guys, we're just going to print this up. Yeah, so C- <laughs> CBS on 11, on 11 too. Um, um, last year we had Steve Wyatt on, who he went up there for bottles. I remember this, yeah. And he was kind of saying, like, oh, I could just bought it at the store, sort of Yeah, because, you know, you, well, you show up, you show up on Black Friday, the Whole Foods Black Friday, which is, like, the week after. Mm-hmm. And it was there that day too. Yeah, but it, it goes so fast. It's gone that day. Okay, it's gone that day. Yeah, but it is local. Um, oh, New Glarus um, has a new addition to the Thumbprint series, and it's uh, it's a chocolate stout. Hmm. So I'm kind of curious. It's in four pack, twelve ounces, uh, running from October to December. And you know, we were we were at uh, the BCS tasting this year, and Prop 2018 is a chocolate beer. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious to know. Not that this is barrel aged or anything, but I'm just curious to know like what their interpretation of chocolate is. It seems like chocolate beers are are in vogue now. Yeah. So okay. that's cool. And um, speaking of uh, Goose Island, uh, they're having a 2018 uh, coffee barley wine benefit, uh, benefiting Guatemala. So okay. Guatemala is, you know, that, that family farm where they got the beans for this year's coffee Yeah, um, is in Guatemala. Guatemala had a hurricane. I'm sorry, a volcano. Not a hurricane. A volcano a eruption. A natural disaster. A natural disaster. <laughs> uh, so they're having a benefit. Uh, it's a $35 ticket. Um, $10 for every ticket is going to um, a nonprofit down in Guatemala. Um, for your $35, you'll get five pours, and it's all barley wine. So uh, 14 16 and this year's barley wine which is a coffee barley wine nice okay was awesome. that was that coffee barley wine that day we had it was top two for me yeah yeah it was good um, so damn yeah. wow that's it for news that's it for news that's it for this podcast that's it for this uh episodes of the month we are oh, wow, not yeah. gonna record again until uh the beginning of november okay i will be out of town There'll be lots of photos posted on our Instagram, probably of Nick's adventures here in Chicago. And then you may see some uh, Tokyo beers. or You know, if you get, if you got some sake, go ahead and post that. Okay. You know, I've never been, I don't really leave the country too much. So mm. I'm curious to know what things look like over there. Yeah, so I, I will be sharing some pictures on our socials. But Nick, where can people find you uh, while you're here? Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. If you want to keep up with uh, my adventures, I'm um, BRAD on Twitter. Chicago Beer Pass is on Twitter at Chicago Beer Pass. Instagram, I think, is the uh, most entertaining place to follow us. Yeah, that's the uh, yeah, that's the platform of choice for sure. The the, the beauty shots, <laughs> the beer porn, they all get posted there. Our Facebook page, though, we're always sharing other events we don't talk about here. Uh, lots of photos, like the uh, far and away photos went up there. I put up. Other photos from other events. Yeah, so the you, um, BCS tasting was up there. Mm-hmm. You put up some from Hoptacular. Yeah. So there's always photos going up there. So check that out. Um, they sometimes don't get pushed in the feeds really? as much. So, yeah. They want mm-hmm. money. That's what that shit yeah. is. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, be sure to check those out if you want to see some of these events. And then the website, chicagopeerpass.com. All the episodes are posted there. Links to iTunes, Stitcher, the YouTube version as well. The YouTube channel has other beer reviews. Nick and I are drinking through all these uh, barley or barrel aged Great Divide beers. Yeah, so those, got, those, that was fun. Yeah, we that got a couple fun. other ones I think probably going up after this episode. Right so on. Keep a look out there, and we'll be back next month, man, with another episode. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>